Well, now the observant viewer will notice that uh, you definitely have a different guitar yes. in your hands here. <laughs> Either that or, or it's got badly scratched in the last few minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell me about this guitar. Well, this guitar is it's a Martin guitar. Uh, it was made in uh, supposedly in, in very early 1935 and is the one that was formerly owned by Clarence Wayne. And hmm. I don't, I really don't know what makes this instrument so special in terms of sound. The only thing I know is that it does. It has a very unique, unique tone. Uh, almost an unlimited amount of power, and at the same time, it can be very petite in sound if if necessary. Well, the pre-war uh, Martin Dreadnoughts were renowned anyway for for being big and and special sounding. Yes, but you think this one is even more more yeah, special than and, the average one? And is is strangely enough, and nobody knows why this guitar is measurably petite in size as well. Is that right? The front to back body dimensions and, and thickness are all down for some reason, uh, anywhere from a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Hmm. And different places, and nobody knows why. But uh, and is the sound hole bigger? Yeah, it is, and nobody knows who cut that out. That was done when uh, when the White family purchased. Uh, this guitar, I think, in nineteen in nineteen fifty eight or nineteen fifty nine, uh -huh. from uh, the original McCabe's in Long Beach. Oh, really? And uh, Clarence's his father, Eric Senior, uh, bought this guitar. I've heard two stories. One is that he bought it for twenty five dollars, <laughs> and I heard Billy Ray Latham say that he bought it for thirty five dollars. <laughs> either so, way, it's either good, way, it was good you know, price. Yeah, I would yeah, they say got so. a good deal on it. Yeah, let's hear what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's right. And did you um, did you do anything to this guitar? Or is it exactly as you got it? No, I've had uh, let's see, I had a neck reset done by Randy Wood mm -hmm. back right after I got it in 1975, which is a a very long, interesting story in itself the way I acquired it. But uh, but to answer the question, uh, Randy Wood did a neck reset on it, which it desperately needed when I got it. It was almost unplayable. And uh, it had another neck reset done sometime in the early 80s by Santa Cruz Guitar Company wow. had done that. And it's had, uh, oh, numerous cracks and things like that. It was very badly damaged in a flood in 1993. And that repair work was done by Snuffy Smith over in, uh, in King, North Carolina. Uh, strangely enough, after all that it has been through, it's playing and sounding better now than it ever has.